All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Our Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. And we just thank God that you showed up here today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there's going to be a word that's going to be shared. That's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, my wife, my lovely wife, we just want to say welcome to everybody. Listen, let us know where you're logging in from. There may be some first time visitors out there. If this is your very first time um, logging in, just let us know where you're logging in from. You can shoot us a message. You can put it in the comments section, wherever. We just want to love on you and appreciate you. All of our Spirit of Fire Nation, we love you guys so much. We appreciate you so much um, for your continued support. Um, listen, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We are currently working on finding a location to begin to have in-person worship. Um, but in the meantime, we still want to remain connected with you. There will be a notice that's going to be sent out very soon that we're going to have a special session where we just come together so I can see you and love on you. Some of you I've seen, uh, some of you I have it physically, but I want to be able, we want to be able to touch in and love on you because we know the importance of that. And so, we know the sense of community and family. And that's one of the reasons why God gave us spirit of fire, spirit of fire fellowship, that fellowship of believers of coming together, the family environment, the family atmosphere at the same time. So we want to just connect with you guys and love on y'all. And we just want to see just how everybody's doing and just making sure that you're OK. And because uh, I know, you know, people go through different things and Satan will try to a lot of times to isolate you. Um, to take you out just in life, to make you feel depressed, to make you feel that nobody cares about you, that, you know what, nobody's reached out to me or nobody has even asked how I'm doing. But we want to make sure that you're good and we're praying for you. Our intercessors are praying for you on a daily basis. That's right. On a daily basis. I mean, Sunday through Saturday, we are praying for you. And we are constantly going before the throne of God, the throne of grace on your behalf and speaking over you and your families and your loved ones. And so we just thank God for you all today. Well, y'all, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. And we're going to get into today's message. I believe this is something that's been kind of stirring in my heart for a little while now. And I felt as though I really need to go ahead and teach on this and share this. But before I share with you what that is, let's just go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently. And so we just thank you for it. Thank you that this word is anointed. It's saturated by your power and your presence. Thank you that every heart is open, ready to receive this word, the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the teacher, as the guide, as the comforter, ready to give us peace. I invoke your power and your presence now to begin to amplify not only here, but whatever this stream is going worldwide, that they will sense your tangible presence and that you begin to manifest yourself in a strong way. We thank you that every burden is removed and every yoke is destroyed. I come against addictive behaviors. I come against oppression. I come against depression. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that the joy of the Lord will be their strength and that it is our strength. And so we just thank you, Father, for it. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Now, we just thank you. We just thank you. Now, wherever you are right now, I want you to be interactive with me. I want you just wherever you are. I want you to begin to lift up your hands and I want you to begin to worship God. And I want you to tell him how good he is. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. If you pray in the spirit, begin to pray in the spirit. The Bible declares that you build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on. Let's bring the music up a little bit more, please. We're going to worship God. We, Father, we magnify you. We glorify you. I speak strength in their homes right now. 
I speak strength, whether they are listening in their cars, on their computers, on their televisions, wherever they are, Father. I thank you that there is no distance in the spirit. I thank you that, yeah, move up and down every place, every home. Invade their territory today. Invade our territory. We allow you to come in to direct our ignorance with your knowledge and understanding. Strengthen them this day. Strengthen them this day. Those that have been weary, we speak supernatural strength. We speak the spirit of might upon them and within them now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for peace, which passes all understanding and guards their hearts and minds. I come against confusion. I come against confusion, mental confusion now. In Jesus name. I come against it now. I speak peace over those minds now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak peace over you now. I come against that demonic force that's trying to disrupt your peace now. Loose them and let them go now. In Jesus name. Loose them and let them go. God knows what you're dealing with. God knows what you're dealing with. Yeah, he knows. He knows. He loves you. Don't you ever forget the love that God has for you. Don't you ever forget. He sent his very best. He sent his only begotten son to die just for you. You got to take ownership of it. He died for you. Jesus loves you. Love yourself. Understand that you are created in God's image and after his likeness. Stop looking at the images of others that's being portrayed before you. They ain't flawless. Most of them just as broken as, as some as some that are watching them. Listen, uh, uh stop, stop comparing yourself. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the apple of God's eye. He loves you. He loves you. Amen. Yeah, stop second guessing God's love. That's why Satan come and trying to work on your mind to make you think that God don't love you. Don't nobody love you. That you by yourself in life. No, you're not. You're not. God loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's time to stand up to that bully. He's a bully. And so he tries to wear you down in your thinking. To make you think that ain't nothing going to ever happen for you. And I come to tell you the devil is a liar. I explode that and expose that now. When I say explode, yep, shatter it out of your thinking. Shatter it out of your mind. See, that's one of the number one fears that Satan brings. The fear that God's word won't come to pass in your life. The fear that it won't happen. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, we're going we gonna to hit this thing today. You hear me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, who? Glory to God. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good one here today. Yeah, this is going to be. I sense it already. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, we're just getting the ground ready to sow the word. That's all. The Bible talks about breaking up fallow ground. Sometimes when you're going through all that stuff and it's cluttering your mind and your thought life. It'll be hard for you to hear what God is even saying today with all that stuff going on. So we're dealing with that right now. Getting rid of all of that stuff because I want you laser focused today. I want you pulling and drawing on the power, the anointing of God, the wisdom of God to begin to flow greatly today. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank you for it. And we call it so now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. If you sitting next to somebody, hug on them, love on them. Just like we was in all together. We tell you, greet your neighbor, love on one another. Come on, come into the comments section. Greet, 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 greet the people. Say good morning, family, whatever it is. Just, just say, hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Say what's up to mom and them and all of them. Pookie, Sha Shaquita, Ray Ray, all of them. Boo Boo. You know, we got all these family, all these nicknames. <laughs> so we said we love you. We love you, man. We love you. 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 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we have been dealing with this dominion, this believer's authority series. Um, I've been thinking about changing the name of it, but it's like, hey, we, we, we here. It's like it's time to dominate. God wants us to walk in the dominion and authority. But today um, there's this message that has been stirring in my heart. And I've been just kind of seeing it just for myself and studying on it and and thinking about it. And today, if I could give it a message, a title, um, I kind of was going back and forth between two titles. Um, but I call this one the triple threat. And, and I was about to call it the devil made me do it. But um, uh, <laughs> but you'll see what I'm talking about as I get ready to go in. We're going to go to the book of First John, chapter two. The book of First John, chapter two. And I want us to begin. Um, in verse 15. Verse 15. The book of John, chapter two, verses 15 through 17. And it reads, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So as I begin to go through this. I want to deal with what I call the triple threat. These are the three categories that every person is going to have to deal with in life. And now each and every one of us is going to have to overcome on a regular basis to fulfill the will of God for our lives. So for us to begin to develop in these areas, we got to understand these areas and realize what God wants us to do in these areas. And so that we can begin to grow in these things. So number one, we're going to talk about the lust of the flesh. Number two, we're going to talk about the lust of the eyes. And then number three, the pride of life. Now, I want us to go to the book of Luke four, because this is going to be the meat of what I'm talking about today. This is going to be from first John two. And then in Luke four, we're going to get just the, the meat in the heart of this thing. Because um, next week, I, if, I, if I don't get to it today, probably next week, I'm going to deal with you about a particular topic. And I'll begin to tell you that I'm going to talk about the role of the wilderness. Why are you going through what you're going through? Why things have been happening the way they've been happening. And what I'm getting ready to tell you. So I'm going to go ahead and tell your end from your beginning. I'm going to declare over you that each one of you are about to enter into a new season and phase of your life that's going to be better than the last one that you left out of. That you are getting ready to go to another level in God, that you are going to another level in your life, and it's time for you to fulfill what you were created by God to do. All right? Now, in Luke 4, verse 1, I got to start here because I got so much I want to say, because as I started reading this, the Holy Ghost told me, I don't want you to just scroll over verse one, because we're going to read verses one through about 14 or 15. But I want you to begin and I'm going to unpack this thing step by step. And the Bible says in Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Return from Jordan. Wait a minute. Let's let's just right there. The Holy Ghost said, I need you to stop there. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. This is how it starts. This is how this account starts. Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. He's full of God's power. He's full of God's ability. So you got to understand that right after he gets baptized in the river Jordan, now all of a sudden when he comes out of the water that the Holy Spirit comes upon him. The father says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You got to hear this. 
before Jesus, this is before Jesus performed any, minor, any miracles. There was, glory to God, that the father said, I'm already pleased with you. I don't want to get here. I don't want to stay here. He says, I'm already pleased with you before you perform anything. I'm already pleased with you. I love you. So he was affirmed of the father before he enters into this wilderness season. Now watch this. He says he returned full of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to come back to that because God start, he starts wanting me to deal with you being full of the Holy Ghost and walking in a level of fullness to handle what you're about to go through or to handle what you're currently going through you and I have to be full of power. We have to spend time with God. We have to spend time with the Holy Spirit. We have to spend time in his presence. And then the scripture came up to me in uh, Ephesians 5. It says, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. And I begin, he began to take me back. He says, in the early days when I began to seek him, like never before, he says, remember those times that you were seeking me. Remember those times that you were constantly in my presence, that you loved my presence so much that it caused you not to go out and do other things with your friends. This is the time that I isolated you for the calling that I had upon your life. See, God separated me to now get, be introduced to who he is in a personal relationship so that the personal relationship that you have with God must be preeminent and first place in your life. Before having relationship with others, you got to have relationship with him so that now that the people around you get the spillover of your fullness in his presence, in his word, by, by worshiping with him. Because so much happens in this place, because I, I, I want to fully get there just yet, because he says now watch this being full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus returned. He returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Watch this being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Now, I got to stop here because as I began to look at this, the spirit of God drew this first word being. And I began to look it up. Because if you just read it, it seems like a word you can just easily skip over and really don't pay attention to. But when I begin to look at this, the definition of this word really caught me. And it says this being tempted. He says, in other words, that he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tested for the purpose of ascertaining his quality. Or what he thinks or how he will behave himself. So in other words, he was full of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit led him into this wilderness. And now he was led into this wilderness for the purpose of proving. For the purpose of development. For the purpose of him seeing what was in him. Just like some of the stuff you've been going through is about you. Because the first person you need to learn how to lead before you lead anybody else is yourself. And God is trying to get you to see who you are in the space that you're currently in. And for you to see what you're working with and who abides in you. You, be, you better hear me. Now watch this. So I like this. And, and, and Strong's concordance also says, now watch this. <laughs> he says how he would behave himself. But then it says this to test or to scrutinize enticing discipline. In other words, his discipline was going to be tested in this wilderness. Just like you and I, our testing, our wilderness will begin to see the disciplines that we really have in our lives or the disciplines that we need in our lives to pass the test that we're going through. Some of you are in some final examinations right now. 
You're in the final examinations before God sees if he's going to trust you in this next season of your life because he doesn't want you to injure anybody else along with yourself along the way. And so he wants to make sure that you're equipped enough to handle the assignment that's been predetermined for you already. He says, I'm preparing you. And some of you have been trying to figure out, God, why in the world am I going through what I'm going through? And God is saying you are in some final examinations. And if you pass the test, you are gonna come out in this thing in the power of the spirit. I, I got ahead of myself a little bit, but let, let, let's just keep. This is why, too, the trying of your faith work of patience. That word patience being consistent and constant the same. That's why he said in James, count it all joy when you are being tempted, knowing that the, your, this tempting, this testing, this trial is only designed to make you better. Now, God ain't necessarily putting this thing on you, but now he's allowing it to prove you to you. <laughs> he knows what he put in you. Sometimes you don't realize what's been put in you. And sometimes you're not confident. And God is saying, I have invested time in you over the years. I have sown my word into you. I put my spirit in you. And he said, it's a return on my investment time. God is calling on what's in you to come out of you. And Satan is trying to smother you in your thinking to shut down the greatness that is in you. Now, let's keep going. I want to, man, I want to get ahead of myself. But watch this. And I want to give this to you before I start dealing with these temptations. And this is one of the first statements that came to my mind. Don't waste your wilderness. Don't waste it. The children of Israel spent 40 years in what was supposed to be an 11 day journey. About two weeks. But they spent 40 years. And they died there. Don't die in your wilderness. And now, I'm, now, now I got to say this too. I'm calling you out in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring your strength in the Lord for you to pass every test that you're going through. Hmm. Ooh. And discipline is going to be one of the key factors in you coming out of this thing. Because Jesus had to be disciplined enough to handle every temptation. And discipline is simply enforced obedience. And as Jesus came under assault and attack, and this is the thing, he was in here 40 days. Now, I'm not even going to, I haven't even gotten to the temptations yet. I haven't even got to the different stages yet. But this is something that the Holy Ghost started dealing with, with me with. It's like, stop. OK, read carefully what you read. Begin to really think about what you're reading. He was there 40 days and nights. 40 days and nights, because many people read over this and they skim over this and they look at the three temptations Jesus went through, but they don't consider the length of time in which he went through them and the intensity of the temptation in which, which he went through. All we do is just read it real quick. He did this. It was this. And it was this. And then he came out. Uh, uh. This was 40 days and nights of intense scrutiny, temptation, agonizing torment in areas that now I'm talking about strong pressure applied to Jesus to see what he was made of. Uh, mm. This is where we get that statement. What don't kill you makes you stronger. But your resistance to these things is what helps to develop you. Not just you going through it, but what you do as you go through it. Now, let's continue to read. It says being 40 days, verse two, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So Jesus was on a 40 day fast. He didn't eat anything. So don't you know he was extremely hungry at this time? This is where we begin to enter into the first examination, which is the lust of the flesh. Now, the lust of the flesh is learning how to gain control over your appetites. But also this deals with legitimate needs as well. Because watch this, 
Satan is going to try to get Jesus to meet a legitimate need and to act apart from God in order to meet this legitimate need. This is why it's such a temptation. It's something that's a legitimate need, so it has to be met and fulfilled. But the issue is, how is it fulfilled? Because he says here, and Jesus and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Not only is he dealing with his legitimate needs, but when he makes the statement, if thou be the son of God, he's also now trying to bring Jesus's identity under attack. He's trying to get him. Watch this. And this is what I begin to hear. Not only is he dealing when he starts dealing with your identity, he's dealing with your insecurities. And if you're an insecure person, you'll begin to act out of season with things. I don't want to get ahead of myself. You'll begin to do things that you ain't supposed to do trying to prove to somebody who don't care about you anyway. To get you to do something you don't need to be doing because it ain't God's time and the season to do it or ain't his way to get it done. And Satan is trying to get Jesus to come out of himself to meet his own need because he was at his points, his apex, 40 days and nights, not eating. So just imagine how hungry he was and how much, watch this, it's a temptation only if you have the ability to fulfill what the temptation is. I can't get tempted to get pregnant. I have nothing within me to now no, to, to get pregnant. But watch this. Whatever you are tempted in, it means there is an appetite that's there for it. And so now, but right, watch this with this legitimate need. Now, Jesus just coming out of this temptation. I mean, coming out of this this fast. So he's hungry. So Satan is now working on that hunger. He's working on the point that Jesus is at his point of his greatest hunger. In other words, your greatest time of desire in that area, the greatest time where you can make a decision to easily go one way or the other. And he says this, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Wait a minute. I stopped and looked at something here. He says, man should not live by bread alone. So it means also that, yes, bread is needed for living. But that's not the only thing you depend on. So I don't only focus on these external needs, but then Jesus puts the emphasis on the, 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 the needful thing. The scripture says, I think it's in, in Mark, maybe. Or Luke, it talks about the needful thing, talking about the word of God, but by every word of God, showing the preeminence of God's word and showing that, wait a minute, when you put the word first place, even over your own desires, you need to put God's word first place. So God's first, I'm second, others are second, I'm last. I'm putting myself to the side to say, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to fulfill this thing? I know I have the need, but how do you want me to fulfill it? I know I have the need of shelter. I know I have the need of food. I know I have the need of clothing. I know I need to take care of my family, but how do you want me to do it? See, this is why dudes that's in the streets, they say, man, I got to feed my family. And so, yeah, that's the driving force they try to use to legitimize illegal behavior to say, hey, I got to sling some dope, but I got to feed my family. So they feel the intense pressure to now supply a legitimate need, but then they do it the wrong way. And so God is saying this, and that's the temptation of the wicked one. And that's why it's so deceiving and so enticing that if I can get you to get some quick money in this area to meet a legitimate need, even though it's an illegal thing, even though it's an immoral thing, but it's a legitimate need. And that's the thing that people work on their own minds to now legitimize or now, what's the word I want to use? It's kind of legitimized or to make good within themselves or make themselves make themselves feel better about what they're doing, knowing it's the wrong thing to do. Knowing they shouldn't have done it this way, knowing you shouldn't have taken that job to get that thing done, knowing God told you to do it this way. But you said, no, I'm going to do it this way. It's the legitimate need. And see, that's the driving force. The need is legitimate. But the fulfilling of it is the issue. And God is working on you that some of you know that you you have made 
some permanent decisions off of temporary situations. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to make a bad decision and feel the ramifications of it for years. Making a bad choice to some of you to write a bad check and now your account out of balance because now you were so because you were just hungry and your family was hungry. And the only thing you couldn't see God meeting that need. So you did something illegal and immoral to try to meet the need. People do it all the time. They do things. And that's why you got to be mindful of how we judge and treat people, because we don't know the intense pressure that they're feeling in that area to fulfill that need. And it's a legitimate need. But people a lot of times say, you know, we look on the outside in and say, well, you should have gone and gotten a job or you should have gone and did this. Yes, that's true. But some Sometimes pressure for one is not the same pressure for another. And so you got to make sure that when watch this, because you're going to have that temptation. Whether it's in that area or another area. Some of you having a legitimate need, you know, of, of fellowship and companionship, but you fulfill it the wrong way. And now you're trying to justify the relationship. Now you watch this, you in a bad relationship trying to fit, a, trying to meet a need that's there, but not realizing if you allow God to work on you and to work on his timing with you and for you, you wouldn't have made the bad decision to get married ahead of time or to hook up with that joker. And now you feeling the ramifications of it. And some people, I mean, the ramifications can be a disease you still that's still lingering in your body. Or now you had a child out of wedlock, which now God, that child is a blessing from the Lord. But now you experience some things and now the father's not in that child's life because of a bad decision. I'm not saying this for condemnation because God is going to reverse some things and he's going to now help you even out of bad choices or situations and things that have been now damaged in your life because of a season that you were in and you made a choice. I'm telling you, the spirit of God is about to restore what, da what, what was caused, what damage was caused by a bad choice back in the day. You better hear me. You better hear me because you're going to need some supernatural help. This is why he said acceleration is at hand. He says restoration. He says, I'll restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar, the years. He says the years of bad decision making and your credit shot, the years of bad eating and your body is racked with disease. He says, I'm going to restore and reverse the years. Whatever it is, the years. Somebody shout restore. Somebody type restore. Somebody declare restore. That even though you made bad choices, the God of restoration, the God of the reset, I'm talking about you about to reinvent yourself, baby. That I don't care. That your brand, the brand of your name is about to change. That I'm telling you, people, when they heard your name, they thought one thing about you. That I'm telling you now, God is going to turn around what the devil meant for evil. God is turning it around for your good right now. Glory to God. No, I said glory to God. You got to receive it now. He's going to restore. But watch this. It's going for some of you, it's going to take some discipline. Discipline and restoring because it took you years to get in it. And I know sometimes we want to shout God turn it around right now. I mean like tomorrow, everything. But sometimes it may be a level of discipline that has to be invoked over a period of time because of some decisions that were made. And it's okay because God is going to strengthen you for the supernatural turnaround. Part of the supernatural turnaround is God employing the spirit of might and strength, inward resolve and the gift of even faith to now allow you and to help you to believe through the process of your restoration and to strengthen you through the process of your restoration. Your turnaround, I sense this, your turnaround is already taking place place. The moment it's been spoken, turnaround has started taking place. The angels have been dispatched to help you. People have been put in position to meet you along the way, the way of your restoration process. God has given you divine escorts to now escort you into your new season to provide you wisdom. Would have taken you months to learn through reading that God is going to bring accountable people around you to give you a battle plan for what it is for this season of acceleration. And the battle plan is going to help accelerate you into this new season for your life. Glory to God. Can somebody give me a uh, rag or something? I, I need some. Come on. Somebody say restore. 
restore, 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 restore. Now I'm just de dealing with this first temptation. Now, now, now watch this. Jesus was at his greatest point of hunger. And at this greatest point of hunger, his appetite was probably raging. And so, but he overcame it by putting the word of God first place and by declaring the word of God. And so when, when he comes against this temptation, he's given us an example as to how we need to deal with when those things come, that we take the word of God and we begin to say, thank you. We take the word of God. And we begin to say it is written just like Jesus says, the word of God declares and decrees this. And so I decree it over my life to resist this thing. See, to meet your own desires and needs. That's why scripture says it like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things shall be added unto you. This is how we put the word of God first place. Let's, let's make it real practical. Let's make it real practical. God starts dealing with you about something. You have a legitimate need. And so what we first need to do is we need to go to the word to see how do you design or desire for me to meet this need that I currently have? OK, if you have need, the Bible teaches so seed. Well, if I had something to sow, I wouldn't need it. Well, not necessarily. If what you currently have is not enough to meet the financial need that you have then it's considered seed to be sown to now cause the increase to come in. And so you don't realize that you got to release it into God's hands and for him to multiply that thing, just like Jesus when the two fish and five loaves wasn't enough to feed the multitudes, he said, give it to me. And so when he took it, he blessed it. Jesus being our high priest after the order of Melchizedek, just like Melchizedek released the blessing on Abram, Jesus releases the blessing on us and empowerment for prosperity and success. So that now whenever we go into any endeavor, we are dressed with the clothing of the anointing of the blessing so that whatever we do is going to work out for our good. But we got to honor God. And sometimes we try to put the cart before the horse and we try to go into a situation without honoring him first and putting him first so that now we take him with us into the negotiating room. We take him with us on the interview. We take them with us into the classroom, whatever it is, into the bedroom, into the boardroom, wherever it is. God, you need God to know how to deal with your spouse. You need God to know how to deal with your children. You need God to know how to deal with your business. You need, you need, listen, you need God for every legitimate need that we have. God has a remedy for it. He says this, seek first my kingdom, but watch this and my righteousness. In other words, Function in my principles and understand who you are. Some of you not stepping out on something because you're not confident in who you are. And God said, did I not? Listen, if I told you, wherever I got, I provide. And if I told you to do something, that means I'm ready to send you in that area and to invade that area and that you are already equipped for that area and that you're already graced and anointed for that area. And I've already put abilities in you for that area. And sometimes you going into that area is your development process and that you will never develop to who I called you to be if you never step out into a new arena. And so God is saying, I'm telling you, Satan is trying to tempt you. Stay on the job and be safe. And God never told you to do that. He told you to come off of it. He told you to step out into the step into the deep step out. I don't care if you can't see the way God says it's time for you to step because I got you. OK, OK, OK. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, some of y'all been playing it too safe. I know what it's like to step out. I'm telling you, I know what it's like. I was preaching to some guys the other day. And I began to testify what God did for us when we moved to Atlanta from Richmond. No job. You know, we had to stay with family. No place to live. No car. I had to use my mama's car to go. She let me borrow a car to travel there. I'm talking about the day that we're to leave. We didn't have the money for the U-Haul truck. And we got a house full of furniture that we got to move out of a storage unit. I had a man of God call me and said, meet me in the parking lot. And he handed me an envelope with cash in it that was more than enough to rent the U-Haul truck truck for gas for us to be able to stay at a hotel because we had twin girls two years old at the time. And I'm talking about it was just my wife and I and the girls. And then when we finally get to Atlanta, we had to unload the truck by ourselves in the rain, in the storage unit. And we made it like a, like a play thing for the girls. 
And I was like, man, I mean, sitting there is almost like, God, what are we doing here? What are you doing? And God was meeting our needs every step of the way. I had, I had no job. And God told me the Holy Ghost gave me instruction. See, being led by the spirit, being led by the Holy Ghost. He says, I want you to make these faith confessions. And Dr. Dollar had this thing, daily faith confession, where he told me, I want you to confess this three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There were 20 minute confessions. And so it was like, I made a job out of believing God for the job while I was putting in resumes and my wife putting in resumes for me on the computer as well. And then God leads me to this job. And all of a sudden now it was a part-time job. And I worked there for about a month. I didn't even tell you about me getting to the job. That was a whole nother story. And now I'm telling you just along the way and we borrowing money from her nephew at that time and using change out of a jar to go buy groceries. And listen, that can be really demoralizing to a man to say, OK, man, I need to take care of my family. God, you got to show out for us that you called us here. You told us you led us here. And so now I'm telling you. He began to now meet our needs. And all of a sudden now my wife finds I get the job. It's a part time job. They come to me one month later. Watch this. While my wife is looking for a place for us to live. Now watch this. They offered me full time position, which now gave us the money to pay for the place that we just received. And I'm telling you, it was in a nice area. Low rent. It was a, what do you call them? Subsidized housing and all of that. But in an expensive neighborhood. You got to see this. God puts us in a place that he's taking us to. Glory to God. He's, he's showing us things, but now he's taking us every step of the way. You got to hear this. While, watch this. We still didn't have a car. We were going to church. We were bumming rides either, you know, from her nephew using his car to go to work or getting on the bus with the children, having to walk around the corner to the grocery store. See, all of this stuff. See, everybody don't know the story. And I'm telling you, the day that we get a, we get a notice. Somebody, a family friend gives us a car debt free. My sister-in-law drives the car from New York all the way to Atlanta to deliver us, the, the, to deliver us the car. The day that we're moving, the car is being delivered. She pulls in while I'm actually loading the, the stuff on the truck. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Now, the car wasn't the best looking car. My wife actually cried when she saw the car. <laughs> But that car was one of the smoothest riding cars. I mean, that thing like you were floating on air while you were driving. Now, it, was, it wasn't pleasant to the eyes because where we were moving to had no public transportation. So we, I get to have the job. We get the place. God provides the vehicle. So everything is working together for our good. And so now I'm telling you. God knows how to meet your need. He knows how to meet it. If you would just follow his way to do it. See, Satan will try to tempt you to get off of God's script. He'll try to tempt, tempt you to do it a different way so that you can get out of God's rhythm, out of his grace for your life. See, where God got it, he provided. Just like when he brought us back to Richmond. And now all of a sudden now he shows up. I'm like, God, if you call me to do this thing, you got to provide. He sent a girl to the to a service that we didn't have money to pay for the school that we were having a service in. And that she came in and wrote a check that took care of the rent as well as gas for me to get back and food for us to get back to and fro from Atlanta. I'm telling you, God kept showing us all the way that I'm with you. I remember we went into a home that we were um, going into here and we didn't have the money. I'm talking about God, what God guides, he provides. And watch this, watch this, because with the temptation, temptation tries to get you out of integrity, tries to get you out of doing it the right way. And so you got to make a resolve to do what's right because it's right and to do it right. And there'll be pressure on you to not do it the right way. I remember we came back. We had to move back here. Now, watch this. Now, I got to give you all the whole account. I got to give you the whole account because this just shows you this shows you some of what I'm talking about. While we're in Atlanta, while we're in, we, we were staying with family. Now watch this. God has called us back to Richmond, but we fighting it. In the process, we try to build a house and we build a house in Atlanta. My wife is working in real estate and she has all these deals on the table. Now watch this. I knew we were supposed to come back. Even one of our board members, one of my good friends, he said, Mike, um, I think y'all supposed to move back. He said, oh, y'all supposed to move back to Richmond. And I knew it. We were staying in an extended stay hotel while our house was being built. 
So you got to understand the whole process. Because see, when you go through your wilderness and you go through these seasons of temptation, sometimes how it look is different from one than the other. God is leading us to come back. But we want to stay there because we knew the whole purpose in going to Atlanta was to get ready for the ministry he called us to establish. And so when we got what we needed to get, he said, it's time for you to go back. But no, we don't want to go back. We want to stay there because we like it there. And so now we get the house. Watch this. We won't in that house for how many months? About five months, maybe. And maybe even not long. The house went into foreclosure because we couldn't pay for it. Watch this. Why? All of the deals my wife was going through that, I mean, it was like guaranteed deals. Everything was shutting down. Nothing was working. We lose the house and it forced us back here. See, see, you don't want to be forced, Jonah, into the will of God. Jonah didn't have to be swallowed by a whale if he would have done what God told him to do. Some wildernesses experiences are self-invoked. Some things you're going through because of disobedience. Now watch this, because where God guides, he provides. That's his place of grace for you. We come back to Richmond. My children, my family, my wife and children come back to Richmond. My son is born by this time. So now three children coming back. You got to see this thing, man. I'm telling you, we come back. I have to drive. We driving back and forth from Atlanta every weekend when we started the ministry. Every weekend. Nine hour drives every Friday night and then every Sunday morning heading back because I had to go back to work. My family has moved here now. I leave them on Christmas Day. Christmas might have been on a Sunday at that time. And I remember it was snowing and I see my children at the door and we were staying with my mom. And I'm telling you, they waving at me bye bye. And tears coming down my eyes. I said, God, I can't keep doing this. I can't leave my family. I said, you got to provide something for us. And so I go back. I come back on the first week in January. I take a full week off of vacation. I said, I ain't I said, when I come back, I said, I'm coming to Richmond to get me a job. I'm going to find where I need to be. Now watch this. I told the people, watch this, out of the integrity of my heart. Now, let me, let me, let me before I go there, I come back to Richmond. I was staying with a friend. The same friend that told me I was supposed to be back here, I stayed with him and his family while my family was here so I can go back to work because that, that was my, my livelihood, my income. I still had to feed my family. I still had to provide. Now watch this. Come back. I come back and go to an old place of employment to visit a former co-worker. I'm believing God for a job. As I'm at the front desk, Another former co-worker comes down and says, hey, Mike, how you doing? Comes and I tell her why I'm in town. I tell her I'm looking for a position. She said, guess what? I just left a position to get a new one within another division. Do you want me to hook you up with the manager in the position I love? I said, yeah. So she hooked me up, met the lady. This was like a Tuesday. I get the interview maybe that Wednesday, get a call that evening or the next morning. They offer me the job. I mean, God just divinely hooked this thing up. $5,000 more a year than I was making in Atlanta. And then watch this. Out of the integrity of my heart, out of the integrity of my heart, I wanted to give the people in Atlanta a two-week notice. Now, most people would have understood. Man, you driving all this way to come back here to work? Yeah, go ahead. They would have released me. They would have let me just go ahead and go. But out of the integrity of my heart, I wanted to operate in integrity with them. And I said, I'll continue to work to give you time to find somebody to fill this role. Because God was leading us back the whole time. And we knew it was his will for us to come back, but we were fighting it. And so now it was like a late man. I sense it was like a baby being birthed out and the pain and the baby was like, no, it's time for this baby to be born. It's time for spirit of fire to be birthed in the earth. Man, you better hear me, man. I'm sensing something. He says this. Watch this. Not only that, he guides, he provides. God knows. I'm telling you the grand scheme of things. Sometimes you don't realize why God is leading you certain ways. Watch this. The company I went to was a company I worked for prior. When I went back, watch this. I worked with the company while we started the ministry. I worked with the company for about a year, maybe or so. 
During this time, we purchased another vehicle. We got some things done. We were, we saw things moving. All of a sudden, we have a mass meeting. They make an announcement. We having layoffs. If you get a call, then we'll call you if we're going to be let go. Sure enough, I get a call. I get a call. I go to the office. It is a new manager that comes in. She, she tells me that, you know, because I was one of the last ones hired, I was one of the first ones fired and let go. I started laughing and I thanked her. She looked at me so strange, like, what's, like, why are you thanking me? I said, you don't even realize. I knew it was God's timing for me to go. But watch this. The time that I was at the company, it caused me to gain tenure with the company. So I gained a pension. Fast forward. So by the time, watch this, God knows what he's doing. From the time I got laid off, I was on, um, what you call it? Unemployment. While I was, the unemployment was coming in, taking care of our needs, the ministry begins to increase. By the time, that's my time. I set myself on the timer. By the time that the unemployment ran out, the ministry was at a position where it could pay me, where I could be full time. But watch this. It's time for us to move and find a, a place. My wife finds a place. She does the research but we need a certain amount of money to close on the deal. We're like, okay, God, where are we going to get this money? I'm driving in my car one day. It was at the, um, at the church. We were at the office. All of a sudden, I hear in my spirit, look in the back of the car in the bag. It was, a, it was a paper bag that had some documents in it. In there, I completely forgot about the pension that I had earned while I came back to the company. The amount of money that was in the account was the exact amount that we needed to close on the house. I said, look at God. Look at God. And I called my wife instantly. We got the money. I'm telling you, God guides and he provides. But when you try to do it in your own strength versus being led by him and following his instructions. And I'm telling you, all of those times, see. And what God was showing was, I, haven't I always provided for you where I've guided you? He says, don't forget. Don't forget what I've done. Scripture says, stir yourself up by way of remembrance. Stir yourself up. Remember what I've already done. And watch this. What you're doing now is there's something that's been leaping in you for you to step out to do. There's something God has been talking to you about. There's something he's maybe has been dealing with you about that you need to get accomplished, that you need to trust him along the way. And one of the first things that gets settled in your heart that this is the will of God. Then to say, OK, Lord. As I begin to walk this thing out, because he'll show you the second step after you take the first. Guide me every step of the way. I'm trying to think, how did I get here? Lord Jesus. Every step of the way, he's going to guide you. Every step of the way, he's going to provide for you. Every step of the way. See, before pan the pandemic hit, he told me to shut down us having services. In person. He said, shut it down. The day that he gave it to me, I didn't even tell my wife about it. She knew. But I just knew I was being led by the spirit of God. I could not fight it any longer. We had to just shut it down. I said, the way we doing it, uh-uh, this ain't it. We got to shut this down. Pandemic hits, everything shuts down. Didn't even know what was coming. All I knew is what the Holy Ghost was telling me. And so you got to be sensitive to what he's talking to you. And we saw, we've seen increase since the shutdown of everything. Personally, and even with the ministry, we've seen increase. Others, no, we, there's more clarity that's been gained. Now I'm sensing it's time to begin to come together to worship and fellowship together now. So that's why we're in the process of believing for a new facility and where God guides, he's going to provide. If he did it before, he'll do it again. But this time, the spirit of God has said it's going to be better. This time. I'm going to show you some things. This time, you thought the power manifested before. 
You're about to see greater manifestations of the glory of God and greater increase. He says, it's time for you to think bigger, to think broader, to think better. And I'm going to provide to blow your mind and to blow and shatter limitations off of you. You better, I'm telling you, God wants to bless you. I'm talking about in every area and to cause healing to come in your body for you to enjoy this new season. He don't want you to be sick and rich. He wants you to be healed and rich so that you can enjoy the riches so that you can travel and not be hindered by anything. I'm telling you, God is taking you from the back to the front right now. Man, you better hear me. If y'all was here right now, I'd probably lay hands on all of you. I'm telling you, God, breche combra, nuncande, se tele, motala, tell my people. Tell my people I'm coming. Tell my people I'm glorifying my church for this final wave and push. Tell my people I'm going to glorify them personally and publicly. Privately things I'm going to visit them and teach them for them to demonstrate it publicly. I'm telling you, the spirit of God is at hand. The time is at hand. We're in this new age and dispensation. This age of grace, I'm telling you, we're going to see the manifested glory of God where we are believing to see the maim healed, the lame walking, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute talking. I don't care. Creative miracles. I want it all. I'm talking about creative miracles in your money, creative miracles in your body, creative miracles in your mind. Stuff that's been all people who've been diagnosed as bipolar. I command healing in your mental faculty. Some of that stuff ain't no mental, ain't no um, physical thing. Some of it is a spiritual thing. When you cast that devil out of your mind and that oppressive spirit off of your mind and you cast down that image, you'll begin to sense and to see that your thinking is clearer, that you have control of your emotions. Why? Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. You about to see change like you better hear me. You're going to see change like you've never seen it before. If you can't believe it now, I got enough faith for you. And I deposit that spirit of faith in you now. In the name of Jesus, I call you out. I call you out from darkness in Jesus name. And I call you into the marvelous light. I ain't playing no games. We ain't playing. Me and the Holy Ghost ain't playing no games. All of heaven is backing us up. Yes, the enemy is desired to sift you like wheat. The enemy is desired to bring detriment. He's tried to shame us. He's tried to bring a, a reproach upon the name of this ministry. He's tried to bring a reproach and tried to get people to attack. And he's done the same thing with you. And I know what it is. God is saying you have caused such damage in the spirit realm that Satan has been afraid of you. And he's trying to now watch this. If he can't touch you, he'll try to touch those around you because he'll attack your heart by attacking those and those things that you love the most. But in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every attack of the enemy and I command the hand of the enemy to come off of you and I release the hand of God over your situation now in Jesus' name. You better hear me. I declare every hindrance removed. I ain't even finished. I'll get to the rest of it later. We working this thing. We working this thing. We working this thing brick by brick. Day by day, moment by moment. Oh, Oh, Jesus. This thing growing stronger and stronger. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. You, about, you about to... Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. How can I say it? There are some people who think they're doing something. In the body of Christ, it ain't nothing about what they're about to see. They've used normal principles that the world has used. But they're about to get fully into the fullness. This is about this is a time for the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's Jesus. Watch this. Who is the embodiment of the Godhead bodily? We are part of his body. Individually, we don't have the fullness, but collectively we do. And we're about to see. Radical transformations. It's time for you to come out the closet. Everybody else doing it. It's time for you, the real you, to step up. And there's an infusion of power. Man, I, I'm trying to, sometimes I can't articulate it in the natural and it can only come out in the spirit. 
That's why sometimes while I'm preaching, I just go into tongues. Sometimes it's like that thing trying to come out. It's like how Paul said there are things that he couldn't even utter in this natural language. It's like the, what I see and what I sense and the, the, the flow of power for us to begin to walk in. <sighs> That's why he called us to train his people as to who they are to go into every area and to walk in dominion. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about y'all. This thing has been intensifying. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, yesterday, I said, sometimes it feels as though as I'm preaching, the, the anointing comes so strong, I feel like I'm ready to burst out of my skin. But I've been sensing over this past year or so, an increasing. It's like increasing the capacity to walk in this fullness. Now, this is going to be the thing. Let me just drop this in you real quick. This is kind of separate from the message, but it may be tied in in a way. The more you spend time, it's always like the more you give me, says the Lord, the more I'll give you and reveal and release. The more you consume of me and the less you consume of the world, the stronger the anointing will become on you. And the greater manifestations in the spirit you'll begin to see. The greatest, some of the greatest manifestations I've had in my life was in my early years of ministry. When I was totally engulfed, when God took me through a season of, I don't want you to watch any television. I'm serious. He took me on that journey. I mean, that was discipline because I love TV, but it was feeding things in me that he was delivering me from. See, whatever you feed grows. If you want it to die, stop feeding it. So when lust is growing, stop feeding the lust and it begins to quiet and it deadens, this, your desires begin to change. So whatever you're struggling with, don't feed it. And as I began to do this, I became so sensitive to the spirit, in the spirit with things. That God began to transform and begin to change me because he had to flush out some stuff. I'm, I'm, um, when I start dealing with some things in the spirit, and teaching on flowing in the spirit and all of those, I'm, I'm going to have to start sharing some experiences and some things. I mean, to the point where as I'm in worship, I could literally sense the presence. It was like somebody standing at my head as I'm prostrate on the ground before God. I could sense a divine presence. And part of me was afraid to open up my eyes because I thought I would have seen into the spirit realm. But because I spent intense time in worship and intense time with God, he began to download things in me. And we have yet to see, even in this Western civilization, the level of power, dominion and authority that we're supposed to see. The book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles are to be the Acts of the New Testament church. We're to cast out divination, spirits of divination out of people, soothsayers, mediums. Where they lose their power because we cast the demon that's supplying that power to them. The world is hungry for the supernatural. And it's time for us to demonstrate it. See, you prophesying just ain't for people in the church. We preaching to the choir. We prophesying to each other versus taking that anointing and going to the earth. Revealing the secrets of men's hearts for the purpose of repentance. And we're about to see greater manifestations of that. That we walk in God's love, but we're still the called out ones. That we don't lose holiness. We don't lose our level of living right before God and putting off things. Because Jesus died for our sins does not mean that we just go and just live loosely. 
I think I'm about to teach again on the five hindrances of grace. And one of those things is looseness that you say, okay, all right, Jesus died so I can just do whatever I want to. No, he didn't die for you to continue in sin. Paul even said that. Should we continue in sin? God forbid. But that we come out of it. We have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us or harm us. So watch this. Scripture says judgment begins in the house of God, but it doesn't end here. So there's a great refreshing and cleansing of some things, thought processes. Live, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's some things that have hindered that are being removed. Some stuff y'all don't even realize is the preaching of the word is going forth. That there are things that have been hindering or hampering you, irritating or agitating you, that the anointing attacks that thing and it begins to remove the burden. That's why when you're in that place of a, the anointing and prayer in that atmosphere, that things come off of you. But you have to know how to enforce your freedom and to declare when those things try to regain access into your thinking and in your mind that you begin to reject it and resist it in the name of Jesus because if you reject it, it won't gain access to your life. Amen. So, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Now, if there's anybody out there today, maybe somebody who's logged in later, somebody who's on here live now, but you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to make this confession of your faith. Come on to this side. Come on into the family of God. The Bible says you can receive the spirit of adoption, whereby you can now call God your father. He's your creator, but he wants you to be, he wants to be your father. He wants you to, to become a spiritual child of his by becoming born again. That you receive a new nature. That he'll give you a brand new spirit, creating you a new heart to help you in life. People have mocked this thing long enough. It's time for you to experience Jesus for yourself. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. I have eternal life. Watch this. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen, you're born again and you know it. But I want you also to understand that there's a, an experience subsequent to salvation called the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. I want you to receive the Holy Spirit now. He's there available to you. No pressure. He's not, you know, sometimes people have, you know, depending on the experiences you had, you've heard about, Holy Spirit, you heard about who he is, but sometimes you've seen people acting in ways like, I don't know about that. But I'm telling you, he loves you. He's a gentleman. He won't make you do anything you don't want to do, but he's there to help you as a comforter, as a God, as a teacher. He's what's called the third person of the Godhead. You have God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says these three are one. And so now you can receive him to dwell in you. So just like Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost and power, you can be full of the Holy Ghost and power. So I want you to now just simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. Yeah. I receive you in your fullness. You're now on the inside of me. I believe that I've received you in me. Now you promised me that you would give me utterance to speak in other tongues. Now I yield my tongue to you. I yield my life to you. Fill me to overflowing in Jesus name. Amen. Now I want you to begin to lift up your hands and begin to worship him. Begin to open up your mouth and begin to speak. Out of your belly, the Bible declares shall flow rivers of living water. But thus spake he of the spirit. Those that are out there that can pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. It's time for you to walk in the fullness of this thing. I'm telling you, 
Yeah, Holy Spirit, he's there. He's there. He's there. Yeah, robo shakala mande, robo sekete la mande, ko refra malama. The Bible declares as when you speak in tongues, you're speaking not unto men, but unto God. That's why we don't understand it, but he understands it. And so also you charge your spirit man up. You build your spirit man up as you begin to pray like this. So now that's how you can become full. Full of him now on the inside of you by stirring. It's like a well of water. If you know it's like a well where you prime a pump and that water that's on the inside in the ground begins to flow out. See, you priming the pump of your heart and now he's now flowing power and ability and strength and might to get things done. I mean, literal power. Well, you'll be stronger inwardly and you could be stronger, stronger outwardly. I'm man, this thing is it, it, I'm telling you. The Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, he, he, he's somebody, he's somebody else, boy. He's, man. Hallelujah. Now, next, there may be somebody who you don't have a church home. And, and I know we're virtual right now, but we're coming back together physically. But it's important where you're connected. Get to a place where you're being fed spiritually, where you can have a sense of belonging, where you can have pastors now who are called to be overseers over your soul. We take this very seriously. If this is the place that God is leading you to, get to the place he's leading you to. You feel the witness of your heart. Or you say, you know what? I want to find out some more information about the church. Yeah, come on, come on. We'll, we would love to answer any questions that you have. But it's important to be connected. Get to the place. I believe every person needs a pastor. Every person, that's what pastors are called for, for the fivefold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I know there are many people who, who kind of shun organized religion, but we're talking about relationship with God through Jesus. But now the church family, the ecclesia, the called out ones, is not the building, it's the people. We just use buildings to house what we do as the church. Come on and connect with us, whether you're in another state, whether you're in another country. You could be one of our E-Church family members. And I'm telling you, get connected to this place. I believe that your life will be transformed and changed. Make the decision today. So for more information, there's a, um, there should be some information on the screen. Or if not, it can be uh, you can reach out to us at connect at spiritoffire.us. I believe it's connect at spiritoffire.us, if I'm not mistaken. And then you can reach out to us that way, or you can simply send us a DM, message us, direct message on our um, social media platforms, whichever way we want to reach out to you. We have one of our Connect staff team members to reach out to you as to how to obtain, maintain what you came to receive. If you want more understanding as to, okay, how do I begin to live this life? I got born again, got filled with the Holy Spirit. What do I do now? We want to help you, help disciple you, help train you. Remember, Spirit of Fire, remember those three things I shared the other week that God laid on my heart, just the way that he laid it, so plain and so simple. Bring them in, raise them up, send them out. Bringing people into the body of Christ, the ministry of reconciliation. Training them, raising them up, discipleship. And then missions, deploying them, servanthood, sending them out to serve either within house or out the house. Wherever it is God has called you to be, the sphere of influence he's called you into, the realm of influence, that you need to be trained and developed as to how to conquer that area to be the best at what you do. We're here for you. We love you. We appreciate you. Praise God. Well, y'all, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Listen, this is a time of worship, just as much as everything else. During praise and worship time, during the ministry of the word, worshiping in our giving as we honor God and come before him with the fruit of our labor. As you sow and as you give. We believe, according to the word of God, that it'll be given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He said he'll release a blessing upon your life. But now watch this. That means also witty inventions, ideas, concepts, ways, multiple streams of income that God begins to show you and grant you wisdom to know how to get those things taken care of, get those needs met, how to get those things accomplished in your life. So as you begin to sow, I want you to sow in faith. You know, some people say, well, we don't give to get Listen, there's nothing wrong with expecting to receive when you sow. It's just like a, a farmer. You would call a farmer foolish for sowing a seed in the ground, but not expecting any harvest to come up out of the ground. It's okay to expect. You should expect. And one of the ways that you water your seed as you sow is every day speak over it. Father, I have given. Therefore, it is given unto me again. You promised me in your word 
that you will cause men to give into my bosom. You will increase my resources for giving. You will minister seed to me. And watch them do it. Praise God. Well, the information is on your screen as to how you can give. There's a QR code. code. You can scan it. It'll take you to a secure page. Um, you can just simply do that. Um, your information is not sold to a third party, anything like that. Other ways, cash app, I think text by giving, or giving by text. Uh, they're just different methods that are on your screen. You can use whichever one um, to sow and to give. Praise God. Well, Father, we thank you as they give. It's giving back to them again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. I declare increase. I declare debt cancellations, debt freedom, debt reductions and removals. And, and Father, we give you glory for it. I thank you for income streams that you're beginning to reveal to them, showing them the strategies, granting them the wisdom, revealing the information that needs to be revealed, have them in the right places at the right times, connecting and meeting with the right people. And so we give you praise, glory and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. Well, y'all. Out of time, certainly not out of message. I thought I was going to get through a lot more than I did today, <laughs> but I'll continue next week. We'll continue in along these lines, and I'm, and I'm going to teach you. Oh, today, oh, first Sunday. I forgot. It's communion, communion, definitely, definitely. Oh, man. Well, I want y'all real quick, if you want to, um, if you need to go and get your elements, some of you may already have them with you. Thank y'all, I completely forgot. <laughs> we want to honor God. By honoring the communion table, Jesus says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. The bread or the cracker, or whatever you are using, represents the body of the Lord that was broken for you. Jesus took on 39 stripes with the cat of nine tails on his body, ripping and tearing his body to shreds. And he did that to now take on your sickness and give you in exchange divine healing. So when we take partake of communion, you can receive your healing. If something is going on in your body, pain, discomfort, injury of any kind, disease, you can receive healing by faith. What do I mean? By now, when you do it, say in Jesus name, use your mouth, invoke your authority and say, I believe I receive complete healing in this area of my body, wherever it is, point to it, lay hands on it, declare it and believe it and allow the healing power of God to work in you. Through his blood that was shed. Our sins have been forgiven. We've been forgiven of the transgression of sin. We had this sin nature. Jesus came, died for us. We now have God's nature in us as we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or taking away of sin. <clears throat> Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, Jesus died for the sins of the world to take away the sins of the world. The world. Not just you, but the world, your neighbor, the one that you don't like. See, he, listen, Jesus died for his and her sins just like he died for yours. He loves them just like he loves you. And this, remember that ministry of reconciliation. It's time to demonstrate that and to share that with people. Praise God. Well, at this time. Jesus said it like this. Hopefully you have time to get your elements. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he is up saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, folks, y'all, I'm out of time. Once again, certainly not out of message. But I pray that something has been shared that'll be, that's been a blessing to your life. So once again, on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we want to just say thank you guys so much for tuning in today. But we still proclaim Jesus as Lord. And that here at Spirit of Fire, we're changing the culture, igniting a passion and living a dream. I declare God's favor, God's blessing, God's grace upon you. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. See you next time. Peace.